Brawl Stars recently released a huge update introducing masteries into the game, and I've got a lot to say about it. Mostly great things, but that's not to say the update was perfect. I'm gonna cover everything that I'm gonna rate on a scale from one to 10, and as always, I'm gonna be 100% honest. Let's start off by talking about the biggest change that we got in this update, and that is masteries. And oh, I love masteries, they're so awesome. And it sounds like you guys love masteries. Everything that I've seen about masteries on Reddit, on Twitter, on your comments to these videos has been absolutely positive. I have seen some negative feedback and any of the negative comments regarding masteries that I've seen has been one of three different things. Either you get XP too slowly, or you should be able to get XP in the map maker, or they dislike the daily cap on mastery XP. I hard disagree with two of these things and kind of disagree with a third. The easiest thing for me to disagree with is that the opinion that mastery XP should come from map maker. <laughs> it's like, I really understand why people want this, right? Because there are some brawlers that you can play on specific maps that are incredibly easy to get certain wins with. But the thing is, is if you're exploiting a specific map maker that is not made by the game and is not competitive, is that truly mastery? I personally don't think that it is. Instead of promoting mastery, it promotes cheese. Now, Supercell wants to add cheese rewards into the game and a cheese track with those rewards. <laughs> that would be another thing. But I am personally very glad that mastery is not available in the map maker. As to the cap on the XP that you can get in mastery every single day, I'm honestly happy with it. It takes anywhere from five to 10 hours of straight gameplay, depending on how many wins you have, how many trophies you are at. And I like what Danny said, it's an unhealthy amount of Brawl Stars. Even for someone like me who breathes all stars. Honestly, I'm really proud of Supercell's decision to give a daily XP cap since it gives the most dedicated players a stopping point every single do day that they reach it. The biggest negative feedback that I like kind of get is people saying that mastery takes too long. I can understand that. I really do. And there might even be some validity to that opinion, okay? Danny said that it would take an average player about 48 hours of gameplay to complete a mastery track and to get that brawler's title. In order to reach max mastery for every brawler in the game, that would take 132 straight days of game play if there was no XP cap, right? And with the daily XP cap, the soonest anybody could possibly even reach max mastery with every brawler would be 273 days after it came out if Supercell didn't add more brawlers, which they're going to, right? And that's if you hit the max XP cap every day, which is just like insane. We're not gonna see anyone with every title for a very, very long time if we even ever do. The thing is, I don't even think Supercell intends for somebody to try and get the mastery title for every brawler. It's not intended, right? The whole point of mastery is being able to show off a title that's really impressive and to make sure that that title is very exclusive. That when people see that you have a title, they're like, oh dang, this guy, He's at least good with one brawler. <laughs> in order to complete mastery, there should be some element of actually having mastered that brawler. It should not be easy. It should be an accomplishment that's actually worth showing off. And because it takes so long to reach mastery, that's what makes it cool. So honestly, even though I do see people saying that mastery should be a little bit faster or there should be ways to get bonus mastery XP or something like that, I actually think it's pretty fine the way it is right now. Maybe my opinion will change later on, but I'm pretty much okay with it. And a big reason for that is the fact that the resources rewards for mastery happens relatively early on in the mastery track. It's six times faster to unlock all the resource rewards than to actually get a title for a brawler. Most players will actually get it done in about eight hours, but I've seen some people finish it in Five, right? I actually did a live stream where I averaged three brawlers to rank one every hour. So that's the first gold drop three times an hour, which is like really good, right? In fact, Mastery is going to completely change how I progress my free-to-play account, which I'm not gonna explain in this video. That'll happen in my next free-to-play episode. Honestly, I think that the Mastery Rewards put Brawl Stars' economy at the best place that it's been since before the Power 11 and Gear update. Now, I haven't actually run the numbers as far as like how much time you have to put into upgrading a Brawler and maxing it out when the max cap was Power 9 versus now with Gears and everything like that. But even if it still takes longer to reach Power 11 with all these additional resources, the game feels a lot more rewarding to play now, and I think that most people will actually agree with me. Before the update, I had almost zero desire to play on my max account because trophies they were meaningless to me. And even if I did get a brawler to a high rank, it was really frustrating to continue playing them every season for one trophy to keep that rank because I was worried I'd go on a losing streak, which that's not any different now, but now trophies mean a lot, right? Because you actually gain mastery XP faster at higher trophies. And in fact, like pushing mastery on my brawlers below 500 kind of felt a little bit painful on my free to play account because each win gave less than half the XP of my brawlers that were above 600 trophies. Now I want to push 
push my brawlers to higher trophies and I want to play them at higher trophies. Overall, I'm enjoying playing the game even more than before and that's actually saying a lot because I've played this game for a long time, right? Now from the feedback that I'm seeing on Reddit and Twitter, it seems like you guys are as well, right? Even in really high trophies, more players are playing a wider variety of brawlers which is reducing matchmaking times and making the game across all trophy ranges more fun. And what I find most interesting is the fact that the game actually hasn't changed like at all. We're still playing the same gameplay. We're still playing the same brawlers, but it feels more fun and more rewarding, which is surprisingly making the game feel really fresh, even though hardly anything's happened. And as a total side note, the star player getting 20% extra mastery points per win. Oh, I love it. It makes you feel really good. And like just the fact that Supercell's like, oh yeah, here's a little bit of extra because you dominated that match. It's really exciting. And like the, the cool thing is about this update is that it's really nice to have to be more excited about the update content or a feature that's new in the game as opposed to just having the new one or two new brawlers, right? I'm always excited to play the new brawlers, but a lot of updates, it seems like the brawlers are the main point of the update. So overall, Masteries gets a huge thumbs up for me. That was so cheesy, I'm sorry guys. And if anything, it's significantly better than what it was replaced, which was player XP. As you guys know, before the update, you'd get 20 tokens every time you got enough XP to level up. And it was not a big reward at all, right? My maxed out account was at level 243, which means that in almost almost six years of playing, I got 4,860 tokens. <laughs> it's not enough. That's only enough for nine bonus rewards at the end of the Brawl Pass, which is basically like one and a third reward every year. It's not very much. It's not a big deal. And honestly, I don't mind that they got rid of it. If anything, I'm glad that we at least have some under our legacy stats so it wasn't like completely useless. With that being said though, I don't fully know why they needed to get rid of it in the first place. It wasn't a very good source of rewards. Did they really need to get rid of it? Player XP. Ultimately, I think that they want fame to be the bigger indicator of long-term progress, and they wanted to make room for the profile, the player profile for other stuff, which makes sense. I'm not honestly convinced that it needed to go away, but I'm actually kind of fine with it because it wasn't a big deal to me anyway. I literally never cared about player XP. I had to look up what my player XP was because I didn't know, and I don't know if I've ever looked up another player's player XP and been like, whoa, dang. It was just a meaningless number, so the fact that it's gone, it doesn't impact me very much. Let's briefly touch on the titles that we got for each brawler. I think we can all agree that some of the titles are better than others. At least like personally, there are titles like CEO of Brawl Stars or Your Mom, which is hilarious. Then you have less exciting ones like Jesse. She's my favorite brawler and hers is The Builder. That's cool, I guess. Not as exciting, not as funny, right? And honestly, I'm actually okay with that. It's not your mom or bro, right? But I don't think that every brawler's title needs to be really funny or hardcore because not every player in the game is the same. We all have different preferences, and while one title might sound really great for you, a different title might resonate with somebody else. Overall, a title is proof of your dedication and mastery on a particular brawler, and I think that that's what matters most, not so much what the actual title is, even though that does matter too. So, I'm a huge fan of titles. I love that you can show them off in battle by putting them on your player profile. Oh man, and I love the player profiles at the start of every match. I do think that they could shorten it by about one second, and I feel like that would feel pretty good. However, I have actually heard that this has been really beneficial for a lot of players. There's this glitch for some people, and if you know, you know, and it's really frustrating, where you get stuck at 78% loading, and it takes a really long time for you to get into the game, but by the time you do, the match has already started. You, I'm sure you guys have seen this, where you've got somebody that's just, a, they enter into the match AFK, they're not moving at all, and then, like, four seconds later, they jump into the match, right? This has kind of fixed it for those players, and that's really awesome. I would rather wait four seconds for my teammate to get into the match than to actually get start the match sooner, like, personally. And also, I really like looking at everybody's player profile and seeing what ranks they're at. My only piece of feedback for it is that players shouldn't have to see it two or three times in every single Power League match, but I really love this concept a lot. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased. I've spent a fair amount of money on pins and skins and profile pictures. <laughs> so I wanna be able to show them off to people, but I actually think that my feelings are pretty similar to your guys's. People love showing off the cosmetics they've collected over the years. And even if you're free to play and you don't have a ton of cool things to show off, at least you get to personalize what other players can see. Like you might not have the premium pins or whatever, but that doesn't matter. You get to personalize it and customize it. And it's still a reflection of who you are and the time that you've spent playing Brawl Stars every single time you 
enter into a match, which is really cool. I really like that your mastery rank for your current brawler is shown because it's a good indicator of how much experience you have with each brawler. And I really, really love that your fame rank is shown as well because players who have played for a long time will be able to show that off. Before the update, I saw a ton of people saying that fame was completely useless. After the update, it's turned into a pretty awesome flex in my opinion. In fact, I wanted to briefly talk about fame because I've seen a lot of misconceptions about it, especially on Reddit where people seem to be under the impression that fame is worse than what we got before it was introduced into the game, which is completely false. If you understand how the Brawl Box progression system worked before the update and how fame works now, you will know that fame is undeniably infinitely better than what we had before because what it replaced was nothing. It's not a negative thing at all. It's just an addition to the game. And yes, mathematically, anything is infinitely better and more than nothing. So you can't tell me it's not infinitely better because it is infinitely better, even if it's not that much better. <laughs> People seem to think that when a player unlocked every single brawler in the game from brawl boxes, that their gold rate increased from future boxes. That is false. Gold did increase once you unlocked enough power points to max out every single one of your brawlers in the game. But after you unlocked every brawler from the boxes, you didn't get any extra Extra resources from boxes at all. Fame didn't replace anything. It was an addition to the game, which came with absolutely zero downsides. I'm not sure why people think that fame wasn't a downgrade when it was undeniably an upgrade over the previous system, but I wanted to quickly clear that up for anyone that is confused about fame. And I agree. It's, it was pretty useless before this update, but now that it gets shown off at the start of every single match, I'm pretty hyped about it. Okay, we got a few random things to talk about before I rank this update. I love the concept of the community event slot. Now, in case you guys missed it, it's not that basketball and duels are permanent, it's that the community event slot is permanent, and before every update, Brawl Stars is going to do a poll with the community and ask them which game modes they would like to come back into the game for the following season. Right now, it is basketball and duels, but next season, it might be Volley Brawl and Siege. It all depends on what the community votes for, which I think is a really cool concept. Now, some of the maps for Basketball and Duels this season have not been my favorite, but Supercell's already making improvements and I'm glad they're experimenting with different maps, especially now that we've got unbreakable walls. This is very exciting to me. Tons of throwers that were completely useless have now become more viable. Tons of tanks that were completely useless have now become somewhat viable. And it's a lot easier to play some brawlers like Dynamic or El Primo who thrive on maps with lots of walls, but who also destroy walls with their supers. Like some of those brawlers, like their kit just doesn't make sense, which prevents them from ever becoming really competitive. Except now that we have unbreakable walls, which helps with that a lot. But the thing is, is that Supercell's experimenting with these unbreakable walls right now. And so even if they find some issues with certain maps and how they use unbreakable walls, they're going to learn, they're going to improve things. And that's awesome. And honestly, most of the maps have been really fantastic with the exception of just a couple of Brawl Ball maps. I don't like that the unbreakable walls on certain Brawl Ball maps still are very difficult for you to goal, score a goal when you reach overtime and all the other walls break except for those. And so, but Supercell can adjust, address that. And that's really great. And even even though we didn't have a ton of balance changes, the walls actually changed up the meta a fair amount. And I think that's pretty awesome. Now let's talk about the new brawlers. Now, as I'm releasing this video, RT should be live, but as I'm recording it, he is not. And uh, he actually got a bunch of nerfs before I tested him on the Brawl Stars Olympics, but I still think he's gonna be pretty strong. Either way, it, I'm not really gonna talk about how strong he is. Let's just talk about for his concept and how his concept and Willow's concept, oh my gosh, I am big fans. I'm honestly like, I think I said this before, before, but I'm really impressed that Supercell is continuing to release new unique brawlers, even though the game has 60 plus brawlers already in it. Their abilities are really cool. Their character designs are really cool. I like their personality a lot. Although the one thing that I find a little bit weird, if you look at the loading screen for the game, RT looks really tiny. And also in the animation, he looked really tiny. But in the game, he's like this giant robot. Like I'm pretty sure he has one of the biggest hitboxes in the game. I haven't tested that out, but it looks like he does. And I would really like I personally really like the idea of a tiny little robot fighting against big brawlers a lot more than I like a big chunky robot, which is kind of what he looks like in the game. But then again, not all of the brawler scales are actually like really true in actual battle. Like, I, I think Eve it should be smaller, but I don't actually know that for sure. She's in a spaceship. She herself is tiny. Anyway, it's not that important. I just really like the new brawler concepts and I'm really excited about the newest environment and like the season theme. I've had a lot of people asking me about like brawl theory and whether or not I'm going to be able to continue that. And I've been waiting until until Supercell actually releases enough stuff in the game that is actually worth 
creating a whole Brawl Theory video about with some actual evidence behind it. Now that the Star Park Hub is in the game, I actually have a few ideas for future Brawl Theory videos. I'm not promising to release them anytime soon because I'm currently working on some other really big projects that I'm really excited about, but uh, it's really exciting to see the park kind of coming together in Star Park. I also like the new skins in the game, including the remodeled skins. They did a really good job. Although I will say that the old bunny per penny turret, way better than the new one. I don't know what it is. I guess the, the old one was just sillier and it's I'm fine with that. I like that. It was so bunny shaped and this new one is kind of like a little small cannon. It's like a toy almost, which maybe that's what they're going for. I don't know. I like the old one more, but that's a pretty small thing. And that's pretty much everything that we got in this update. But before I rate it, I wanted to talk about something that didn't make it into this update. In my last 100% honest update review video, I talked pretty extensively why I felt like the chroma credit costs for mythic and legendary rarity chromatic brawlers should be reduced. 1500 chromatic credits for mythic brawlers is way too much. 4500 for legendary brawlers that are chromatics way too much. I'm not going to go into extreme detail, but let me give you a quick recap as to why I feel like this is an issue that should have been addressed this update. Before the Brawl Box rework to the game, long-term dedicated players could consistently unlock every brawler in the game, including all the chromatics. There was a little bit of like non-consistency because of the drop rates of the brawlers, but if they bought every other brawl pass with their free gems and then they saved their boxes to unlock the chromatic brawler for the season they couldn't buy, then they could fairly consistently have every brawler in the game. And after the Brawl Box rework, this is no longer guaranteed. And I feel like that should have been addressed this update. Every two seasons, we are guaranteed 1,000 Chroma credits from the Brawl Pass. And if you check your daily freebies every single day, there's a chance that you'll get a jackpot reward of 50 Chroma credits, but we're only guaranteed one jackpot every month, and that's if you check every single day. And that comes to about four jackpots in two seasons, but those could be coins, power points, credits, and Chroma credits. So in two seasons, we're realistically only going to get one Chroma credit jackpot. So that's 50 total, right? Thank Thankfully, Supercell did kind of address this a little bit this update. Things are better because of the mastery update because each chromatic brawler gives a reward of 100 chroma credits on their mastery track. So in two seasons, that's an additional 200 chroma credits for the chromatic brawler. So I've I got to give them credit where it's due. A big thank you to Supercell for improving things. But there's still 250 chroma credits missing in a two season period. And we will get more than that. We're likely to get some chroma credits from special events or challenges, but those aren't guaranteed. And basically what all of this means is that the free to play players are no longer able to consistently own every brawler in the game. And personally, I think that's an issue that should have been addressed this update, okay? I voiced this concern, you guys have voiced this concern, I know that Supercell is aware of this concern, but for whatever reason, they didn't do anything and I feel kind of let down. I am going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that they probably just wanted to see how things are after Masteries, but I really would have appreciated a quick response to our feedback by decreasing the chromatic cost for the Mythic Rarity Brawlers and the Legendary Rarity Chromatic Brawlers. Look, I'm 100% fine with chromatic brawlers feeling exclusive. I'm not saying that all free to play players need to be able to have all the brawlers every season. But the Chroma credit system is a direct nerf to the very few free to play players who were active enough and patient enough to make sure that they unlocked every brawler in the game at least every other season. And honestly, all they have to do is just decrease the chromatic brawlers that are at the mythic rate to 1,200 Chroma credits every single season. And that would allow the hyper dedicated and most active players in the game to be able to actually buy every brawler every other season and that I think would be that's all I'm asking for that would make me happy and the awesome thing is about this change is that it would not affect most players in the game at all because most players aren't active enough and or patient enough to have the gems to ever make this happen and be able to save the resources to make this happen because most of their credit chroma credits are going towards the 500 cost chromatic brawlers either way it is a tiny change for a tiny amount of players that would have a massive impact on their experience and the fact that they didn't address it entirely in this update is disappointing to me and I think it's fair for me to mention that in this update review I don't want that to take away from how awesome this update was though other than that this update was a slam dunk the game's more fun to play it's more rewarding to play and it has undeniably been my favorite update for this entire year which it's been the only update for this entire year but for real though it's gonna be very difficult for Supercell to top it this was a great update everything we got was fantastic and incredibly well done and honestly 
I didn't have any major issues with what we got. Uh, uh, even small issues. My only small issue is what we didn't get. And if Supercell would have improved the cost of Mythic and Legendary Chromatic Brawlers, I would have absolutely given this update a 10 out of 10. But they didn't though. So I think a 9.5 out of 10 is easily justifiable. But I want to know what you guys think. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you disagree with me. Either way, let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe for future content, including my free to play series, which is going to completely change with this Masteries update or watch my video content right here. For now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.